Hello financial fans, welcome back to another stock analysis. Today we'll be covering Alibaba stock ticker BABA. Alibaba Group is a multinational technology company that operates a range of online and mobile commerce platforms. The company was founded in 1999 and is headquartered in Hangzhou, China. Alibaba's core business is its e-commerce platform, which includes online marketplaces for retail and wholesale transactions, as well as payment and logistics services. The company's platforms enable millions of businesses and individuals to buy and sell goods and services online with a focus on the Chinese market. In addition to its e-commerce platform, Alibaba also offers a range of other products and services such as cloud computing, digital media and entertainment, as well as innovative new technologies like artificial intelligence and virtual reality. The company's mission is to make it easy for businesses of all sizes to participate in the global economy and to help consumers access a wide range of high quality products and services. They're currently sitting at a $275.4 billion market cap and in 2021 they generated a revenue of almost $133 billion and they're the third biggest Chinese company. 76% of their revenue is generated through China retail, 2% through China wholesale, 6% from international re retail, 2% from international wholesale, 6% from, from their logistics services and 6% from the uh, local services and the remaining 2% from other various income streams. To determine the final valuation of the company, we'll be using a margin of safety. This margin of safety will be based on the financial ratios, the financial health and the growth of the company. And we'll be using a standard margin of safety of 25% or 20 rather, that can never be below 0%. The margin of safety can either increase or decrease by the ratios that we're going to look at in just a moment. And the severity that the margin of safety will increase or decrease by will be determined by using a scale. When we're using four colors in our scale, bright red will mean a 5% increase, orange will mean no change, light green will mean a 5% deduction, and bright green will mean a 10% deduction from our margin of safety. When we're using three colors, bright red will mean a 5% increase, orange will mean no change, and bright green will mean a 5% deduction. The first two metrics that we'll be looking at are the EBIT growth and the margin growth. The EBIT has grown going from 14 billion yuan to almost 100 billion yuan in 2022. The average EBIT growth during this period was 28.1%, uh, meaning a 10% deduction from a margin of safety. The margin has gone down significantly, going from almost 42% in 2013 to 11.3% in 2022. The average margin decline during this period was almost 11% average on, uh, on annual basis, which is a 5% increase in the margin of safety. The final two metrics I'll be looking at are the debt to EBITDA and return on invested capital. To get a debt to EBITDA ratio, we have to take the debt of the company, subtract the cash from it and divide it by the EBITDA. Out of this we get the amount of years of EBITDA it takes for the company to pay off all of their debts. And looking at the graph you can see that the cash is much, uh, much greater than the debt, meaning they can pay off all of their debt with their cash, cash position. In this case that means a 0% debt to EBITDA ratio because Alibaba has no net debt which is a 5% deduction from margin of safety. The return on invested capital, however, is sitting at a very small 1.46%, meaning a 5% increase in a margin of safety. Let's go look at the valuation models next to determine the intrinsic value of Alibaba. The first valuation model that we'll be using is the discounted cash flow model. And I've imported the free cash flow for Alibaba going from 2013 to 2022. The average growth in free cash flow annually during this period was 34% and I'm projecting a very conservative growth rate in free cash flow over the next 10 years annually of 6%. With this percentage we can determine the future free cash flow for Alibaba and determine the terminal year of valuation using a perpetual growth rate of 3% and a discount rate of 9% which leaves us with a sum of free cash flow of $450 billion. All the stuff to do to get our equity value is to add to the cash and equivalents and subtract the debt, leaving us with an equity value of $511 billion. And all the stuff to do to get a discounted cash for price per share then is to divide it by the amount of shares outstanding, leaving us with a price per share of $193.01, which is a 84.19% upside from the current price. The second model that we'll be using is the multiple valuation. In this model, we'll be looking at similar companies to Alibaba, look at their stock price and earnings per share to determine the average PE multiple in the industry, which in this case is a massive 150.42. 
All that's left to do to get a fair value is to multiply by the earnings per share that Baba is generating, which is 72 cents a share, leaving us with a fair value of $108.30, which comes very close to the current price, sitting at a 3.35% upside out of this model. The final model that we'll be using is the mean reversion theory. In this uh, model we go by the theory that the company will always trade above or below its mean, and the metric we uh, use to determine this is the PE ratio. The average PE multiple over the past 5 years was sitting at 33.15 and the current PE ratio is a very high 139.34. This is because their earnings per share has gone down significantly over the past time. This indicates a fair value of almost only $25 with it, which is a 76% downside out of this model. Let's go look at the final overview of our, all of our valuation models next. Looking at our final overview, we've imported the discounted cash flow. We have not used Graham's valuation as it did not give an accurate valuation from this model. But we have imported the multiple valuation and the mean reversion theory price per share, leaving us with an average of $108.75. We have determined our margin of safety earlier using a standard margin of safety of 20%, deducting it by 5% for the debt to EBITDA, 10% for the EBIT growth, adding 5% for the margin growth and adding another 5% for the return on invested capital, leaving us with a 15% margin of safety. Without a margin of safety we get a small upside of 3.78% but adding our margin of safety we get a fair value of $92.44 which with, with the current price of $104.79 is almost a 12% downside. If there's any companies that you would like to see me cover on this channel, please let me know. And thanks for watching.